waiting for the computer to catch up as we do every week. You'll hear silence for a second when it does catch up. Hello and welcome back to the Casey Stratton Podcast. It is Thursday, May 12th, 2011. It's my friend Colleen's birthday. It's my friend Brian's birthday. So I'm just starting right out with the birthday corner. It's like Romper Room with my little uh, tennis racket thing. Did you? I used to watch this show called Romper Room that was on when I was young. This must have been 70, late 70s, 78, 79. And she had this little thing that would swirl and she'd look through it and she'd talk to, you know, she'd say, I see you, Jason, and I see you, Jimmy, and I see you, whoever. And she would never say my name. I'm almost certain I've discussed this in the old video or the old podcast days, but she never said Casey and I was like very devastated by this news, by that. So, um, yeah, well, we are old, I guess. No, we're not that old. We're not that old. Um, I used to also love the show called The Great Space Coaster, if anybody remembers that, with Gary Gnu and all this junk. Anyway, not what I meant to discuss, although we are going to talk about, um, speaking of good news or news um we're going to talk about uh, an animal named Bo. uh this is local news i always talk about current events this time this week we're going to talk about something that happened locally in grand rapids michigan where i live um there was a cat that was found um he was a, a stray cat that had been i guess um a neighborhood kind of stray where a lot of people would uh feed him and i and then today in learning more information i found out that it, it took a number of of months before he would allow anyone to pet him or anything but he did become friendly and he's been going around the neighborhood uh, for about six or seven years. And he, uh, two nights ago, he was found shot through the face with a bow and arrow. So he had an arrow that went in by his mouth, went through his esophagus and out his neck, the back of his neck. Somehow did not hit any major structures, didn't hit the brain, didn't hit the heart or the lungs, didn't hit any major arteries or veins. So it's touch and go, but... um. He went through surgery, he's been placed, and so uh, a local uh, cat group, cat rescue group, actually, well, it's more, it's a trap and, and return, is what it's called. They're called Carol's Ferals. Um, some of you, if you have the uh, Wealthy Theater show from November, I talked about them a little bit because I had them come in and uh, set up a little booth and table and talk about it. But they did, they took over the care of the cat. Um, I, Carol's a good friend of mine, my friend Colleen, whose birthday it is today. She's also on the board and one of the people who works uh, at, with Carol. Uh, to, they take strays and... Um, they bring them in, they spay or neuter them, and then they put them back on the streets, unless they're very friendly, and then they will take them in and try to adopt them out. But the majority of their work is uh, spaying and neutering um, stray animals, feral animals, because wild cats that are born feral in the wild, it's very rare that you can socialize them into a home situation. In fact, my cat June, who's now 14, I didn't hear her purr for like four years because her mother was a feral cat. So she, her her DNA kind of did not was not really sociable. Now she's super sweet and she loves to you know knead on me and lay with me and get kisses. But that took years and years. It was a big commitment. Anyway, um, for each this is a true statistic. For each cat, female cat that is spayed, eleven thousand kittens are not born. That's how far the lineage will go with one cat. One cat can be responsible for up to eleven thousand cats. June, <laughs> I'm looking at the chat for a minute. Um, yeah, June is the one who gets caught in coats. June is very bad with her claws. She can't negotiate them. She's always been that way. Like if, if there's carpet, she'll walk and she'll get stuck. And it's like you can trim her nails every day and it won't matter. But anyway, back to this cat, Bo, which is, of course, what they called him. I don't know. I felt conflicted about that. But also I used to work in a no-kill cat shelter. And sometimes when something horrific like that happens, you actually name them something to do with that in order to almost reclaim it like take the energy back from it from a, a negative to a positive some people think it's mean i don't know who knows anyway someone's taking care of this poor thing and that's all that matters i immediately thought what can i do like i want to do something so i was kind of half joking on facebook i said i should write i feel like i want to write him a theme song and uh carol who you know as we just as we're saying is taking over the majority of his care once he gets out if he gets out of the veterinary clinic um she said, do it, do it, do it. So I quick wrote a song and uh, put it up on Bandcamp, and all the proceeds for that are going to his care and uh, his treatment. And, of course, if he doesn't pull through, the disclaimer is that the money will be donated toward other cats in his situation and other cats that uh, Carol's Ferrell's 
takes in. Um, but it's he's it's looking good today. He's he seems to be recovering nicely. But um, until he is off pain medication, um, it, it'll be hard to know if his brain, you know, if he lost a lot of oxygen or bl- lost too much blood. Maybe you know we don't know what his motor skills are going to be like. But in, um, anyway, um, so far I've already raised like 300 over 350 dollars from the sale of the song that i wrote which is great for one day for one song it's a minimum uh one dollar uh, but you can pay anything you'd like uh ab- ab- above and beyond that um totally i get it you know people who come to the podcast aren't necessarily local but it made the local news i was doing all sorts of interviews yesterday so that was really cool um i'm gonna look at the chat for a minute Yes. Oh, st- yeah. Everyone's talking about how I'm a cat lover. Yeah. Huge. I have four cats of my own. Um, I used to work in a cat shelter. I love all animals. My friends call me Dr. Doolittle. And uh, especially with cats, people call me the cat whisperer. Um, I, I, am, I, I understand animals really well. I don't know what it is. But uh, ever since I was a small child, I've, I've always been re- really good with animals. They tend to really like me. Um, in fact, a lot of like animals that people don't think, they're like, oh, they're not friendly. And then they will be to me. I can go to the zoo and squint my eyes at panthers and tigers and they'll do it back. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> We're communicating. But yeah, I, lo- I love animals. I'm a huge animal lover and I do as much as I can to help with, with the cat situation. And when I heard about that, obviously, um, I had to do something. Uh, of course, for those of you who know, have been following along on, on Twitter or Facebook, my cat Henry, who is 16, is currently going through chronic renal failure. So it really struck me the extremes that um, I'm fighting every day, you know, with IV fluids and, and blah, 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 to keep my cat alive. And then there are people just randomly shooting animals with bows and arrows on the streets. Kind of a big extreme from one end to the other right there because, you know, I, I had uh, trips and stuff planned in the summertime and um, if if Henry holds on, God willing, um, I'm going to cancel all that. You know, the, uh, the only shows I'll do will be the local ones. So, um, I mean, he's in an end of life care. I don't, you know, he won't, he won't, uh, recover, but we're going to hope that we can, uh, get him as far uh, along as we can, um, to have as much time with him. In fact, uh, he just had an appointment on Tuesday and, um, what originally happened was I didn't talk about it much actually in the podcast when I he crashed, I knew he had, uh, he had stopped really eating and he's a glutton so that was just really strange and I brought him in to to the vet and he, you know he, he the next morning I woke up I said he needs to go to the vet because his eyes were just vacant like he wasn't there and he's normally a very sweet cat I call him my right hand man because ever I got him when he was eight weeks old when I was 18 and he literally is one of those cats that has to be in the room you're in he wants to sit right next to you he like wherever you go he goes if I'm laying on the couch watching tv he'll lay there with me or he'll lay just like on the on the rug next to me the minute I get up and get ready and go to bed two seconds later I, I feel the jump up and there he is and he wants to lay right with me and so he goes everywhere I go I obviously that's going to be a gigantic loss for me he's my first pet I had as an adult and all this junk so anyway blah blah he was crashing I took him to the vet it didn't look good the vet said well if he can make it through the weekend then we'll we'll see how much more aggressive we can be thank god I had worked in the shelter situation because I was comfortable with doing the subcutaneous fluids although it is different when you have to stick a needle in your own pet but he's also just a really good boy you know like he he is docile so he doesn't mind it really he gets mad sometimes in fact he's getting more antsy about it and the vet said that's actually a good sign because it means he's feeling better but anyway that was three weeks ago that he went in and we didn't know if he, we didn't really think he would make it through the weekend because his levels were so so terrible in the blood work and it's three weeks later so at his appointment on tuesday this is where i was going with this my uh my vet dr jen said that she honestly would have given him a five percent chance of even living this long so i'm taking every every day i get every week i get but he's doing pretty good so who knows but anyway that's kind of i mean i don't mind it at all but it's like round the clock care i wake up every two hours to feed him and he's so good at it now that like he wakes me up every two hours like i just feel he'll sit by me and he'll paw on my shoulder and meow i'm like oh you need food and i get up and i'm all groggy thank god it's not like a human baby like it takes a half hour i just get up and throw some on a plate and go back to bed so uh yeah it's been crazy but it's you know he's worth it he's my my priority i think i think when you um and this is a larger point i think when you decide to bring an animal into your life whether it's a dog or a cat or a bird or a rabbit or whatever it's a commitment and i think that you need to take that commitment seriously i think too many people don't um a lot of people that's just the cat or just the dog and they let it get sick or whatever happens and i I just, I don't know. I think you got to figure it out. And I was in a terrible financial situation. I mean, thank God a lot of people donated to his care, including Catherine, who I think was with us. Yeah, she's still, you're still here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just amazing. The outpouring of of generosity that that was, uh, 
given to Henry um, for his care. So anyway, this all comes back with Bo. You know, I just, it, it was like, I, I was so heartened and I couldn't believe it, especially on Twitter, it really took off. And then on Facebook, everyone's been super supportive too. But on Twitter, we had the hashtag Team Henry that started. I like how I tried to make a, a number sign with my hands there. Like, oh, we have a hashtag. So um, I guess it'd be more like this. Okay, that makes me think of really awful, <laughs> disgusting things. I hope my mom's not watching. So, um, I mean, because she would actually be egging it on, that's what I mean. Um, so, yeah, I was so heartened. <laughs> now I'll be serious again. I was so heartened by the outpouring. And I really think that, like, karmically or spiritually or however you want to look at it, like, all that positive support um, really, I think, makes, I think it makes a difference. Uh, so I wanted to just kind of return the favor in any way I could uh, when I heard about this cat locally. So that's Bo. That's what's going on. You can go to store.caseystratton.com. You'll see it. It's called Song for Bo. It has a picture of him. You can also go to Facebook. Um, he has a Facebook page called Justice for Bo. And it's B-O-W, like bow and arrow. So um, is this hashtag universal for hash? Oh, I always do this. There's a chat window over here if you're joining us live. You can chat. You don't have to chat. I'm all, I'm also very good or okay with, uh, whatchamacallit, um, lurkers. I couldn't remember the, the word. So anyway, that's that's our current events this week. Um, we're going to keep it local. There's a lot going on politically. There's always a lot going on politically. I, I, I've been kind of shying away, me of all people, shying away from politics. I've been, of course, following, uh, oh, yeah, my hand gesture. I didn't know that. <laughs> I guess I know now. Who knew? Um, and I've been to Europe, <laughs> so I should know these things. I remember when I was in, where was I? There was somewhere, Italy, I think. Everywhere I went, they were asking me, hashish, hashish, hashish. No, thank you. No, grazie. No, grazie, no, grazie, no, grazie. So, yeah, that's what happened. Um, so, yeah, lots going on. I, I, I'm keeping track of world news and stuff but I, i've been trying to refrain from being too controversial because I, I would post you know i post things on facebook and, and people start arguing and i'm just not in the headspace for it so if i'm not in the headspace to debate and argue <laughs> you know things are tough but you know we're getting through it it's uh you know this is all like i'm saying it's about hen and what, henry and stuff but it's one of the most amazing experiences i've had in my life at the same time so i'm really grateful for it even though it's difficult i mean I, we knew this day would come he's 16 he's had a really long life so i'm happy for it so now moving on to questions james asked me a question i don't even think he, he got to join us this week because he's at work so he's usually on, a, on an iphone um but he wa he wanted to uh, um ask me about um collaborating with other artists if i do that um if i'm open to that uh i have not done that very often and mostly because I, I have always been a little bit of a recluse. Oh, he was here. I know. I think he got kicked off. He probably did. But he'll he'll see the recording. <laughs> but too bad. Oh, well. Um, he'll be back. Um, collaborations. Yes. Sorry. Once again. Every week, I think I'm going to be better with this whole, like, if, like, try acknowledging that people are here live, but also that it's being recorded. And of course, as people who have been here in other weeks know, the minute that the actual recording stops, we, it's a little more informal or whatever. We can actually, I follow along with the chat much better. But, um, okay, collaborations. <laughs> I've hardly done any. I'm kind of reclusive. Uh, I, I've never, because I'm a solo artist, I, there have been very few opportunities in my life that I've even really worked with a band, even though I love working with a band. But when you're a solo artist, it's expensive. Uh, to pay people and um, I, you know I just I don't I've never really wanted to be in a band where other people write the, the music with me it's like I would I want to pay people to be in my band and we're going to sing my songs <laughs> that's it but I'm totally okay with that I think you know you own that and that's fine I'm a singer songwriter I do my thing I, 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 I've toyed with the idea from time to time of being in a band but I, I don't think I would enjoy it I don't I don't want to share <laughs> But at the same time, see, this is the thing. I totally own that I want to be a solo artist. But when I do work with other musicians in a band situation, I'm always like, hey, you, you, bring what, you bring stuff to the table. This is the song, but I'm not a professional drummer, and I'm not a professional bassist, or I'm not a professional electric guitar player. So this is the song. Show me what you got. And then in rehearsal, I'll fine-tune, and I'll say, you know, in the bridge... I like what you're doing there, but why don't you make it a little more like this or, or, oh, I love that riff. Yes, let's do that. And then, and that, and then, and then it becomes a very collaborative process. Once you're actually rehearsing with a band, even if it's your own material or somebody else's material, um, you know, you all start feeding off each other. I try to be very respectful. Um, this has always been the case. 
in my career, people in the music industry, like executives and stuff, think I'm absolutely terrible and horrible because I actually have an opinion. And any artist that sticks up for themselves is difficult. You know, you're being very difficult. I'm like, you know that you're manipulating me, right? Because in business, you don't get personal like that. But they think artists are fragile. And so we'll be, oh, if you tell me I'm being difficult, I'm gonna, my feelings will be hurt. And then I'll do anything you say because I'm so lucky to have this opportunity. No. You earn your opportunities, and uh, especially in a, in a major label uh, situation, you better be fighting. You better pick your battles, but you better be fighting them because somebody has to, and it's going to happen. But uh, yeah, it, executives tend to not, they, they don't love me. Granted, most of them are pretty cool. Like you can have your, your arguments in the meeting room or in somebody's office, and then you can go to, go to cocktails and everybody's good later. It's fine. It's, it's business. But when the business people try to get personal on me, I see right through that in two seconds. Come on. But on the adverse, on the other side of the coin, creative people have always really enjoyed working with me. Like people in the studio and people in, in band, like that I have played shows with a band or whatever, they really enjoy the experience because I, I don't throw big hissy fits. I don't get all diva drama. And then believe me, a lot of artists do. A lot of them. <laughs> Jeez. I'm, I'm creative, so I'm allowed to be a jerk. Not really. No. So, um, I mean, you have your moments. You get frustrated. It happens to anyone. But I, I've, I'm usually very good at like holding that at bay and if I have to excuse myself and go scream somewhere, then I do that. But I, I, I try to make sure that everybody has a really good time. I try to make sure that everybody feels that their ideas are respected. I try to make sure that they feel respected, um, that we're we're on, uh, that we're equals in a lot of ways. But at the same time, it's kind of like I do a thing when I work with a band. Like the day that we start, I say, "Listen, this is not a democracy. It's never going to be one. If you're cool with that, we're going to be cool. If you're not cool with that, and if you're fighting not, fighting me, then we're not going to be cool." But it, I, do whatever you want until I say don't do it then don't do it this is this is my show so you get that out of the way everybody respects it I understand that I'm in a place of authority so I, I hold that in a certain way I'm not too friendly either that's the thing you have to you have to strike a balance um, but so that you can hold on to authority but also I just want I want people to feel like it's it's an open experience and it's an honest experience and it and that they can go home and go, wow, no big drama, no hissy fits. I, that, I take a lot of pride in that. Like when I made Standing at the Edge, the people who worked on that record said that it felt like summer camp, that it was the, their favorite record they had ever worked on because everybody got along so well. And that's good. I mean, granted, you're paying them a fortune, but you want people to be having a good time. So um, that's that. But oh, as far as collaborating with other music, like songwriters and stuff, I tend to not be good at all at collaborating with like the machinery songwriters. I hate to say it, but there are the you know the people who crank out the pop hits and stuff like that. I used to have a publishing contract, and uh, with uh, Universal Publishing, actually at the time it was called Rondor Publishing. Now it's part of Universal Publishing, but uh, they were always trying to get me to write with these kind of like nine to five songwriters, and they would show up at my house or I would show up wherever we agreed to meet. And I just one, I'm not one of those. We're gonna write a song right now I, and I don't really enjoy um, writing in front of other people uh, I find that I don't take as many risks and I, I, um, I get very nervous about it but sometimes when I'm with other musicians like or other singer songwriters who are actually performing their work or, or just actually writing for the love and the joy of it um, which everyone does I'm not you know I've disclaimer 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 but there are people out there that are writing to sell them to, to other artists to have big hits and to make money and that's totally fine I, for me, it's a much more spiritual thing. It's much more, it's all about the art and blah, blah, blah. So when I work with people like that, it can be really fun. I prefer collaborations that happen on their own, where maybe you're just hanging out and somebody pulls out a guitar and you, maybe they have a piano or another guitar. And so I grab that and, and off we go. That can come up with some really cool stuff. So, um, oh, collaborations. Um, yeah, well, see... The thing, like the thing with Brandon Carmody, in, it was a collaboration, except I was approached, I was paid, I did it. I mean, that, that was a work for hire situation. And that, and, and you know, in that situation, I am the hired help. And I'm also very good at that. Speaking of like, okay, when I have authority, I have it. When I don't have it, I'm cool too. I would say, okay, here are the vocals that I did. If there's anything you want to change, just let me know. If I hit it, if I hit something not, if you want a, a different phrasing of a line, or you think something should be softer or louder or more dynamic or less, wh whatever. The, let me know and I'll change it. This is your this is your record. This is your song. So I did I did what I thought. I, it's the same thing. Like I'm saying the other side. I I gave it my all. I gave a hundred percent, and then you know I'm more than willing to uh, to shift. 
But yeah, back to yeah, Darren Hay- Darren Hayes always comes up when when collaboration is discussed because we have a lot of mutual fans, which we do because he's so nice and uh, has always kind of like uh, when it's appropriate given me some props which I love him for but we always talk about collaborating we just haven't done it yet he's really busy and and it just we we talk about it and and we and we don't do it so we'll do it eventually it will happen maybe live maybe recording but we've wanted to for a really long time so here's hoping so anyway thanks James for that question I went a lot of ways around it but to me collaboration means a lot of things um, I collaborate with other artists all the time with Terry Johnston of course uh, my, photo- my photographer that I use for everything um, which that's the thing it's not really my photographer it, really, it is a, a collaboration I make a record I let him listen to it he gets an idea I am so bad with visuals I'm like just go for it so um, that's a really great collaboration that I love And the next thing we're going to talk about, and of course, gosh, I can go on and on, can't I, is uh, Catherine and Naomi both on Twitter uh, said I should talk about this. Reworking and re-recording old tracks or not, because we were talking about the new Kate Bush album, Director's Cut, um, that started streaming in its entirety on NPR.org, if you're interested. She went back and she reworked songs from uh, Hounds of Love, or no, I'm sorry, from The Central World and from uh, The Red Shoes. Because apparently she just always she was never happy with those records, so she wanted to go back and kind of rework them, and she considers it a whole new record. And honestly, like my, <laughs> I love Kate Bush so much, and like I want to be like she can do no wrong. And I will say that I only have only heard it all the way through one time, but I wasn't into it. So, but I will say I am all for artists going back and reworking. If that's your choice, then that's your choice. But you need to one, you need to understand that. When you have hardcore fans, the thing you put out is very iconic to them. So when there's changes, it can be very hard to accept them, even if it's sometimes if it's better, you're just kind of married to the original. And so it's risky. But, and I will defend her decision to do this to the end. Uh, To the end. I'm not going to say she shouldn't have done it. I'm just talking about my personal opinion. But my issues with it were more technical than anything else i felt like her vocals just i thought she sounded bored and i was really disappointed by that because she's normally such a dynamic singer or whatever so i don't know i just felt like it was very subdued or something but it almost just felt like she was just bored i I, but you know i'm gonna have to hear it more i'm gonna have to hear it more i was gonna segue into my version of cloud busting but i've already done that in the podcast but i I am gonna play a kate bush song uh, which i've never played so it could go either way but I wanted to play something that was actually on that uh, thing. But um, yeah, in the end, like I'm saying, it's up to the artist and you're taking a risk. If she wanted to do it, she should have done it. Good for her to do it. And uh, we'll see. Sometimes, okay, you got to hear things a few times. I can. There are a few things I can think of that I heard and went, no. And then once I got used to it, it made more sense. I will also say um, on the same token, when Tori Amos went back for that Tales of a Librarian and she remixed a bunch of stuff, um, from the stuff from Choir Girl to Venus and back, I was not into those new mixes. I felt like they took all the compression. I mean, and those records do sound like, but that's what I like about them. I felt like they they made them sound more like Scarlet's Walk. So sometimes I think that's really what I'm saying. As an artist, sometimes I think it's hard to get out of your own way. I say this all the time, and realize that just because you want to make something sound like what you're doing currently people might be really married to how it sounded then and like i keep saying i want to go back and, and re-record the given the grave digger beginning to end because i just hate the way that album was recorded because it was recorded on really crappy equipment and the producer didn't know what he was doing and boom, did he? i mean he did but you know what i mean i didn't agree <laughs> with a, we didn't see eye to eye on some of it and i didn't speak up enough then but it, to me it stood it stands the test of time as songs but it doesn't stand the test of time as far as the recording the recording really bothers me at the same time that was then and this is now i mean i was 18 and 19 years old when i made that record so maybe i should just let sleeping dogs lie i don't know because maybe i would do you know do it more like I, I sound now and people would think it was ridiculous but you know the truth is if i feel like it you give it you, i'll give it a try and if i don't like it it never has to see the light of day so there you go but yeah oh i was making a joke here's my joke and i'm just gonna say it because we're, we're being honest and whatever but while there were so many moments in some of those kate bush songs if you have heard it in its entirety where like she, i'm so used to these vocals that would go up or do something really big and they weren't there they were gone she didn't do it so i kept joking that i was gonna when the album comes out on tuesday i'm gonna pull the tracks into pro tools and like add vocals to the songs <laughs> just as a something to do i guess so i'm terrible but anyway this is um Song of Solomon.
So that was The Song of Solomon by Kate Bush. <laughs> I tried. Even I messed up the words, but that's because she did. I'm just kidding. I'm blaming her. That whole bridge last night, I was like, that's, that's in the wrong order. So then I got it all now turned around. But thank you, guys. I need to uh, sniffle. Ugh, it's cold. I'm telling you. It's been a week. It's been eight days. I'm done with it. I'm done. Thank you all very much. So that is it for the recorded portion of the podcast. You can join us uh, each, almost every week. You better check Facebook and Twitter. If you don't have Facebook and Twitter, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, you can always look on uh, Ustream, although I just realized that today I forgot to, to do the thing that had an, a scheduled event. Oh, well. But 6.30 Eastern Daylight Time, uh, Thursday evenings, 6.30 p.m. That's GMT minus 4. So I think that's what, yeah, so GMT 10.30 um, p.m. Um, so I guess that's probably not even 10.30 GMT, is it? It's probably 20, 30, 22, <laughs> 22, 30. We don't, you know, in America, we don't really do that military type. But anyway, if you have any questions ever that you would like to ask me, you can send them to podcasts at caseystratton.com. It's podcasts with an S. I'll never be able to do the weather. I can't, I'm not used to seeing myself backwards ever. Twitter.com slash Casey Stratton. Facebook.com slash Casey Stratton Music. Store store.caseystratton.com is my Bandcamp store. 90% of the money from the Bandcamp store goes in my bank account. Whereas like something like 60% on iTunes. So, you know, what if? And iTunes also takes like three months to, to pay. So it's all good. Do what you want. I'm all about it, as people know. I love my cue cards. I'm into them. Um, I thought it was more fun. Originally, I was going to print them out and make them look cute, but eh, I thought it would be more fun to write it down. Anyway, that's how you can get a hold of me online. Almost every week we do this at uh, 22.30 GMT, 6.30 Eastern Daylight Time PM while we're on daylight saving time here. And uh, my name is Casey Stratton, of course, CaseyStratton.com is my regular website so uh that's that but uh, i love doing the podcast it's been great to be back in the swing now for six weeks or so and uh, i will see you next time thanks bye